lunch. Good afternoon everyone. James from Junkyard Fox here back at you with another video and today we are overdue for another outdoor arena review. Now a few months ago I tested out the LT Wright Jess Mug Knife and it was a spectacular blade. I was able to make a one stick fire with it. Later, I was able to process a rabbit and then process a cactus pad to make a very cozy desert meal. And that knife with its big scandy belly and a very comfortable handle, it gave me no issues at all. I mean, it was a, just a flawless blade. So today, we are testing out its younger relative, the Bark River Knives Bush Bat Knife. Now, of course, this is designed once again by Chris Tanner in association with his friend Shane Wink. As you can tell by the blade, there are a lot of similarities to the Jessmuck knife by that big Scandivex belly, the centerline point. However, as you see by the handle, it starts veering off into a different direction because it has a different philosophy of use in mind. And we'll elaborate on that later on. But for now, let's go ahead and get the specs out of the way and then we'll get to testing. Thank you for joining me. So the overall length of the blade is 7.75 inches. The blade length is 3.6 inches. It is made out of A2 tool steel, 1 8 inch thick, Scandavex grind. Weighs 4.125 ounces. Now the handles on this particular model are green micarta. Now of course you can change that up to something more exotic if you wish or a different color. Now this blade also comes with this leather sheath. Now this sheath is really awesome. Uh, you can place the blade it's ambidextrous, so you can place it this way, or say you're a lefty, you can place it this way, no problem. And it comes with a magnet built onto the sheath to help it from slipping out, as you can tell. That's very forward thinking right there. So now for the philosophy of use for this blade. So when Chris Tanner was designing it, he had in mind something very, uh, something of a hybrid knife. So he wanted something small, so it can be easily concealable, lightweight, something for everyday carries. However, the blade itself is very bushcrafty. It's very, you know, traditional for the outdoors. In fact, it looks very similar to the Jessmuck with that Scandinavian grind, the Scandivex grind, and the big belly. So, you know, you're, you're, you're at work taking care of business, and afterwards you, you decide to go hunting, fishing, hiking, whatever the case may be. You don't got to worry about switching out your knife. This one can take care of the issue. You can take care of the, whatever is thrown at it to a degree. Now, for the handle is where things start getting a little different. This is designed as a karambit handle. Now, for those of you who don't know what a karambit is, a karambit is a weapon. It is a strictly a CQC. You know, if you got to take care of business, you know, soldiers out there in Afghanistan, things like that. Now, I'm, you know, I'll be honest, guys. Unless I've been sipping on the malt liquor, I am a lover, not a fighter. So I really have very little experience when it comes to knife hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff. So I'm really not going to bother with that in this, in this review. Okay, so first test is can I make a fire? I think every knife should be capable of making fire because it's such a universal need. So let's just try to make a one stick fire here. Now, one thing I have learned before I start is with this ring back here is it's quite painful to baton with that. It does hurt. So I'm gonna remove my finger and put it up here like that. I believe Joe also mentioned that in Feral, from Feral Woodcraft in his review. So there we go, as you can tell, my finger is outside of the ring. Well, let's get started. Yeah.
Oh yeah. So as you saw, it had no problem making a fire, but taunting, feather sticking, striking the ferro rod. Now meanwhile, right now, we have the fire getting nice and hot for a nice bed of coals because we're going to be cooking up some food. Now, the chances of you getting in a knife fight, at least I like to, I hope to think, here in America, are quite low. But everybody's got to eat. And even if you end up in a knife fight, it's no good to fight on an empty stomach. So what we have here is a couple of vegetables that we're going to process for some improvised camp cooking. Now before we begin, I, I know I'm going to get this in the comments, so I'm just going to address it now. This is a Scandivex grind. As a Scandivex, I know it's not the best for the job. When it comes to food processing, you probably want something like a flat grind or a hollow grind knife. However, we are once again testing this knife, and we are going to get it out of its comfort zone. That's the point of testing. And it is slicing very well. Very nice. And the blade is still razor sharp. Avocado next. Now, of course, none of these are particularly hard to cut. I understand that, you know, but it just goes with the realism of things. Go. Very nice. Now for some game processing. Now you saw at the beginning of the video that we caught ourselves a catfish this morning. Here he is. Already took care of him. So he's already done. So we're going to use the blade. We're going to use the bush bat to process this guy. And with the vegetables that we have, we're going to make some fish tacos. So. Like I said earlier, you know, maybe this knife isn't designed for that. I, I'm well aware of that. I know you guys are going to say, you know, use the right tool for the job and, you know, you want a fillet knife. However, if this is all you have, I'm sure we can handle it. So let's get started with this fish. And then with the vegetables, we're going to make some catfish tacos. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, like I said earlier, I know this knife isn't necessarily designed for filleting fish. I get that. However, everybody eats. As humans, we are endothermic animals, and we ha constantly have to eat far more often than we're going to be getting into knife fights and things like that. So, now this is where my interests lie when it comes to the outdoors. I like catching food and eating it. Catching wild game. They cut it pretty good. Okay, so here we go. Let's get rid of the guts.
other side, right here. Once again, guys, take it easy on me. I'm not by nature a fisherman. But so far, we're getting the meat we need. And of course, I'm gonna save the rest to take home for a soup. So nothing's gonna go to waste. I'm gonna keep this guy, take him home, make a soup. This is where all the bones are. Right here though, is where the meat is. So this is gonna be making our fish tacos. Better than this. That was definitely a success. Almost forgot. Some lime on there. Well, that's about the conclusion of this review. I really liked the bush bat knife. I thought it was very cool to handle. You know, just, it was a very different knife. And there is, I will admit, a learning curve to using this handle because I have no previous experience with the Karambit style handle. However, it very much worked for what I wanted it to do. So as a fixed blade, I believe that it should be able to make a fire. Light batoning, feathering, striking a ferro rod, check, handled that. How about some light camp cooking? Cutting some lemons, some tomatoes, avocados, jalapenos, check. It handled that just fine. In fact, it handled them better than what I was expecting for having a Scandivex grind. So that took care of it. Now, how about the catfish, some game processing? It took care of it. Now, is it the most efficient tool for the job? No, but it was never designed to be. Now, this blade isn't designed to be your main skinner or your main belt knife. That's not what it was supposed to do. It's something of a hybrid for your everyday use that, you know, if you end up coming out here and you didn't plan ahead and, you know, whatever the case may be, you don't have your other knives, this will take care of what you need to take care of. And I really liked it. So, definitely has my seal of approval. This now goes off to another member of the outdoor arena to test out. As for me, guys, I'll see you guys next week with another video. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet to keep up with my adventures. And I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. Now I mentioned the sheath that it comes with from Bark River Knives previously. This leather one right here. I really like it. I love just how versatile it is. It's really nice. However, when Chris sent out this knife, he also sent out this custom Kydex sheath. 
Now this is, I believe, by C2G Fab. So this is Kydex. So if you're not a fan of leather or you live in a place where there's just a lot of moisture, you can get something like this and dangle it from your neck. Now I'm not really a big neck knife kind of guy, so I don't use it that much. However, just so you guys can see, you know, the options of, you know, having an aftermarket sheath, you know, something like this looks very nice.